Hello, I'm Aubrey Mullen, and this is my demonstration of what my actual class would look like when implementing the lesson plan that I created for the assignment planning for instruction. So as you watch this, you will kind of get a synopsis of what I would do and how I would do it to help engage my class. In this class, it would be the class of fundamentals of cellular biology, class number BIOS 208, and we're hypothetically taking place in the spring of 2022. And as I said before, in this instance, I would be Professor Aubrey. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to class. I hope everyone's been doing well since last time we met each other. I have an activity plan for you to start off our lesson. If you could direct your attention to the screens, I would like you to take a look at the three types of tissues I have displayed here. And so what you're seeing is skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscle, the tissues to be exact. I want you to think of the cellular biology levels of organization that we talked about in last class. And I want you to tell me what level of organization is directly under tissue. What composes tissue? What's the smaller piece that makes this bigger piece? I'll give you guys a moment to think about it, kind of discuss amongst yourselves, and we'll come back in just a minute. Okay, so now that you all have had time to think about it, does anybody have a guess on what it is? Okay, okay. That's right. Eukaryotic cells, or cells would have been fine too. Cells is the smaller organization level that when you put them all together, it makes tissues. And that's actually going to be the theme of this lesson today. So since we're going to be focusing on eukaryotic cells this class period, specifically the organelles and their functions that make up eukaryotic cells, I want you guys to take two minutes and brainstorm five cellular organelles with one corresponding function for each that you've probably learned in the past or you're kind of remembering. Now, it doesn't have to be absolutely correct. This is just for participation points. I want you guys to activate that prior knowledge that you guys have had in past classes and kind of prepare you for what we're about to talk about. So go ahead and take those two minutes. Okay, now that you all, the time is up, everybody's had their moment to think of five cellular organelles, we're going to go ahead and we're going to compile a list together for class. This would be the slide that I would show to my class on the projector screen and I would be able to edit it. So as we discuss different cellular organelles that people had thought of and their functions, I would be able to write them down and just kind of be able to engage the class in this discussion moment. All right, excellent participation, everybody. Um, thank you so much for taking part in that and turning in your papers. That way I can know who's here and who gets the participation points for taking part. Uh, next thing I want to go over is today's lesson objectives. Since we already know the topic of discussion is going to be eukaryotic cells, organelles particularly, and their functions, I want you guys to kind of know what objectives I have for today and what I expect you to know by the end of this presentation. And so by mastering the material presented today, I want all of you to be able to do the following. You should be able to describe and identify the structures and functions of endomembrane system organelles through formative in-class assessments and one summative worksheet assessment that I will assign at the end of class. The second objective is uh, all of you should be able to test your knowledge of the cellular structures and functions that we go over today and be able to show me your knowledge through formative assessments and an online matching Quizlet that's optional. I'll kind of explain that a little bit later. Uh, but the formative assessments I'm talking about is through the iClicker survey questions I'm going to be asking you, that quick write that we just did together, and then that class discussion following and just different things like that. I wanna know and make sure that you guys are following along, being able to comprehend what I'm saying. And if there's anything that kind of trips a trigger going, hey, uh, 
you guys are going, I'm not quite understanding this, just tell me and then we'll go back over it. Maybe I can try explaining it a different way that maybe you will better understand. The third class objective is, I want you to be able to connect these major organelles that we're talking about in the cell, as well as their functions, not only to each other, but then uh, like a cell to its function, but I also want you to be able to connect organelle to organelle and how they, uh, how their different functions actually work together in a interrelated behavior. And from that, I want you to be able to demonstrate this understanding of cellular structures and their interrelated behavior through a analogy worksheet that I will assign. After I explain to the class the objectives for the lesson of that day, we're just going to get right into the curriculum. So I just filled this slide with a picture of a eukaryotic cell that kind of illustrates the different organelles that we will be talking about in the lesson, as well as the associated functions. So in my lesson plan that I created, I mentioned that I would utilize iClicker questions. And I just wanted to include this example here that I would incorporate these type of questions, just kind of easy or at least multiple choice questions throughout my lecture, just to make sure that my students are engaged and participating. And it kind of tells me to, helps me monitor, engage how much that they're actually understanding. And if I realize that a lot of them are not understanding something and they didn't do very well on one of these clicker questions, that kind of signals me to go back into that particular subject and talk about it a little bit more or maybe in a different way that will help students who learn a little bit differently be able to comprehend what I want them to understand. And finally, at the very end of my presentation, I would go over any homework assignments for the summative assessments that I have assigned. I would go through it with them step by step, how to find it, uh, what is expected of them, and also give them a little time at the end of each class to be able to not only get together in groups if it's a group project, but also be able to ask me questions that they may not have asked during the actual lecture. Or if there's something in the assignment that they don't quite understand, but they're still in class, they'll be able to ask me then and there. So for instance, this would be the summative assessment that I mentioned in my lesson plan. It would be a two-part worksheet that they could either choose to do individually or in groups of two. And in this part, I would say there are two sections to this worksheet. The first one would be identify and label 15 organelles or structures on a given cellular diagram. And then also on a table that they would create on this worksheet, give one function for each. The second part would be make an analogy coordinating these cellular structures and functions and choose five of the organelles that they identified in part one and then make an analogy with those five that they selected in a non-biology real life kind of example to show the interrelated behavior of these structures. Then you can see here I made some notes for them since all of my slides would be able to be printed and they would be posted to be viewed at later dates. Uh, I would always include the due date so there's no confusion there. And then I would just kind of explain that they can use those last 15 minutes as what I've already explained. And for the last slide that I would leave up on the board at the very, very end of the class would just be a thank you for watching and thank you for paying attention. Uh, this would be the Q&A portion. And for anybody who's curious, I always like to give like a little tidbit or a little preview of what the next class is going to entail. So people who like to kind of get ahead, read ahead on the subject material, they'll know what exactly is expected of them, what is going to be the topic of discussion for next time, and then just um, ways that they can kind of be a little bit more prepared. I always kind of like to throw that in at the very end. Some people don't even look at it, but others actually do. So that's why I do it.